Cloud technology has reached a tipping point within the industry and most major vendors are moving to the cloud, but is the end in sight? I'm gonna talk about that here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformation journeys. And as we look around us in the ERP space and CRM and HCM and other types of enterprise technologies, we find that most, if not all vendors are making heavy investments in the cloud. And it's almost a foregone conclusion that cloud is the way of the future. And there's a very strong argument to be made for that. And in reality, that seems to be playing out. However, I've been in the space for a long time and I tend to see that pendulum swing back and forth on different trends and buzzwords. And part of me wonders if the limitations and the risks of cloud systems are gonna be enough to bring the pendulum back to a more balanced hybrid approach where companies, yes, they do depend on cloud systems to some degree, but on-premise systems may have a place in the future. So what I wanna to do today is talk about whether or not this is a realistic hypothesis and even if I'm wrong and cloud really is the way of the future and it's not going anywhere ever, then at the very least we can be aware of what some of those risks and downsides are of cloud. And that's something that a lot of organizations won't admit and software vendors won't admit. So what I want to talk about today is whether or not cloud has reached its peak already or whether or not there's a strong future for cloud systems going forward. <laughs> one of the biggest dark sides of cloud technology is that there's a relative lack of flexibility. And let's face it, we can argue all day over whether or not it's flexible enough or whether or not most organizations agree with me on whether or not it's flexible. But when you compare cloud systems to on-premise systems, especially if we're talking about software as a service, which is multi-tenant subscription based where everyone's using the same version of the software with very little variation between different companies, that model is a lot less flexible than on-premise where I can change that on-premise software to do whatever I want, for better or for worse, whether I should or shouldn't be changing the software is a whole nother story. But the reality is, is on-premise has historically been a lot more flexible than cloud-based systems. So the question becomes is, can cloud systems ever become flexible enough to where it's gonna be widespread to the point where there's no need for on-premise systems? And I would argue that right now that's not the case. There's still enough limitation in cloud systems. There's still enough concern about whether or not that flexibility can meet the needs of different organizations to where some organizations are still hanging on to that on-premise model. They may be in the minority. Certainly most organizations are pro-cloud, I would say, and most of them are moving toward the cloud as they choose new technologies, but they're also running into a lot of trouble and pushback when they, when they make that decision. So that's the first question we have to ask is, will cloud technology ever get to the point where it's flexible enough to get the last of those people that are holding on to on-premise systems to eventually convert to cloud technology? So if we look at the history of how cloud technology has evolved, for the most part, it's been companies like Salesforce, which builds a CRM system that's very popular. You have Workday, which is an HCM or human capital management system that's very popular. Those are two examples of very niche focus solutions that focus on one part of a business and they do it very well. And those systems were built as cloud SaaS based systems and they've been able to be very effective, partially because they've been so focused that they can provide a very robust, diverse set of capabilities within a very narrow focused area of a business. On the other hand, when we look at enterprise-wide technology, so ERP systems, for example, when you look at something like an SAP or an Oracle, who in some ways are trying to be everything to everyone, it really strains and tests that flexibility that I just talked about a few minutes ago. So the question becomes is, will cloud adoption ever take over an entire enterprise, or is cloud adoption going to be limited to the edges or some of those areas of focus within the organization? So things like HCM, and CRM, as I mentioned before. Those are two areas where cloud technologies like Salesforce and Workday have proven that they can be flexible enough and address the needs of those specific areas. But when we look at broader needs and enterprise-wide capabilities, that's where we're still seeing strains. So the question becomes, will cloud be limited to some of those outer edges of organizations or will it be fully adopted by enterprises across the board? 
Now, if I had to pick one thing that I think might derail the cloud movement in the long term, it's going to be cost, total cost of ownership. And we've really not seen the end result of these subscriptions and these contracts that a lot of companies have locked themselves into with these vendors. It's really just been in the last three or five years that more and more companies have made that shift to the cloud. So they haven't really felt the pain yet of realizing that that subscription fee is never going away. That's going to be with you forever. In fact, that subscription fee is probably going to go up over time because you've got escalators in there. You're going to add new modules, new users. And you might reach a point in five to 10 years where it's out of control and you're, it's borderline ridiculous how much money you're spending on your annual subscription for your enterprise technology. So until we reach that point, it's too early to say whether or not companies are going to be able to justify that cost. But one thing I will say is it's a lot like leasing a car versus buying a car. People that are used to buying cars, paying off their car, and then driving it forever until it breaks, they have a hard time adjusting or conceptualizing what it means to have a constant lease payment forever. And by the way, you never own that car and you can't change the car to do whatever it is you want it to do. You have to leave it as is. So that whole limitation on flexibility that we've talked about before, as well as that total cost of ownership eventually catching up to companies, that leads me to think that there could be some, some pushback in the future and that pendulum might start to swing back to more of a on-premise model, or if not an on-premise model, maybe it's more of a pricing model that's more in line with what people are used to paying with on-premise systems. And one last note on this topic is a lot of software sales reps that are watching right now, I'm sure you're thinking, well, it's actually cheaper to use cloud solutions because we get rid of your, your infrastructure. You don't need as many people to support the system. We found that to be completely debunked and not true so far as of right now. The reality is even if you get rid of your servers, maybe you can cut a little bit of your IT staff. The reality is you're just shifting the dollars from your internal infrastructure costs. You're just shifting those dollars over to a vendor and you're actually paying more for additional services and additional subscriptions on top of that. So what we found is that after five to seven years, on average, companies are actually spending more using cloud solutions with all things considered than if they were using on-premise. So in five years from now, we might revisit this topic and reassess whether or not this materializes. Now, another unspoken challenge of cloud systems is the operational disruption that it can entail. Every vendor is different in terms of how often they release patches and how they release upgrades and changes to the software. But the reality is you don't have control over that and you aren't necessarily in the loop on when those changes are going to happen. A lot of vendors will email or send a notice out to people just a few days before a release comes out. Some vendors are constantly tweaking and updating the software along the way. Others are doing more major releases along the way. But regardless of what vendor you're working with and the frequency of upgrades and changes to the software, the reality is, is those changes are imposing a disruption on your business. And it's not necessarily that the functionality is bad or there's something wrong with the functionality being introduced, but it's a change that your people are not going to be used to. And it may be something that your people are not prepared for. So the key here is how do we mitigate that risk and how do we ensure that we minimize that operational disruption and have that control that we might have had with our on-premise climate where we could determine the timing and whether or not we even do an upgrade, we don't have that control anymore. Now it's up to the vendors to decide when that upgrade is going to be introduced. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And that's something that might bring that pendulum back where companies decide that they want to have control over when and how or if certain functionality and changes are introduced into their organizations. Now, the final point in this consideration of cloud versus on-premise and whether or not we're reaching the end of the road for cloud in the future is this whole idea of security and the reliability and the uptime of these cloud systems. Now, to be totally candid, I think this is more of a perception issue than a reality issue, but perception is reality. And the reality is there's still a lot of CIOs out there that have concerns, perceived concerns, around the security of systems that they don't own and control within their four walls. Now, in my personal opinion, the reality is these big software vendors that spend millions or billions of dollars on security and infrastructure, they're probably going to do a better job of keeping the system secure and the uptime the way you need it to be. They're probably a lot more capable of doing that than your own internal IT department, but that perception is still there. 
And then you add to the fact that you occasionally have a big outage. So recently, as I'm filming this video just a few months ago, NetSuite had an outage that I think affected uh, two different business days for a few hours over those two business days. Customers across the world just couldn't access the system. And again, that's not terrible when you consider how many companies are using the system and how often the system is actually very reliable and up and running, probably more reliable than most internal IT departments can handle, but it's enough to spook some people and make them think that they want to at least have control over uptime and be able to control the outcome of if there is a problem with, with their cloud solutions. So that's something to think about as well. I don't think it's the biggest concern with cloud systems, but it is something that's still lingering out there uh, in the background. And as these cloud vendors become bigger and cyber attacks become more common, it could be more common that you have outages or things go down with these cloud and SaaS based solutions. So that's something to watch as we look to the future as well. So the reality is that cloud systems aren't going away anytime soon. They may never go away, but there is that possibility. And just having been in this industry long enough to have seen it happen time and time again, there is that possibility that the trend cools off, the downside risks become more apparent to organizations as they become more experienced and realize the benefits and the consequences of using cloud solutions. It may be that the pendulum swings back somewhere in the middle. So it's something to think about as you think about your path forward, even though everyone may be telling you right now it's time to go to the cloud, and if you're not in the cloud, you're dead or you're behind the, the eight ball. And that shouldn't be your consideration. You should be looking at long-term, what do we think is going to happen? What's best for our business? And maybe even look at software vendors that give you options. There are software vendors out there like SAP and IFS, for example, are two ERP vendors that I know are very adamant about this or pretty good at this in offering multiple deployment options. So you have the option of deploying on-premise or in the cloud, and at least that's a way to hedge. You know, you may decide that you want to be on-premise now, but you might want to have the option to go to the cloud in the future or vice versa. You might go to the cloud now and realize later you want to go on-prem. Having a vendor like that with multiple deployment options can be a good way to hedge your bets and, and give you some additional options. So I hope you found this information useful. I encourage you to download some of the links below that will help you through your transformation journey, whether you're early in the process of evaluating your options or whether you're in the midst of a transformation. I've tried to include as much information below and downloads for you as possible. I also encourage you to please feel free to reach out. If you've got questions, you want to brainstorm ideas or unpack any of these concepts in more detail, feel free to reach out. I'd happy to be a sounding board for you. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.